thanks for the opportunity of being here presenting the work of the G20 uh, in, in, in this important topic that is sustainable finance. And, and you see, uh, I'm underlying sustainable finance, so not just green finance, but because that's, uh, you know, that's, uh, it's, it's even more, it's, it's even broader. Uh, you know, this discussion on sustainable finance uh, uh, was never officially in the agenda of the G20. And, and you know, you, you, you and also the ambassador underlined that there is this kind of magic alignment of having the G7 in the UK, the G20 presidency in Italy, uh, at the same time having this joint uh, uh, co-hosting of the COP26. I, I like to underline the role of the G20, not just an overlapping, you know, it's, it's not the second COP26. We can see the COP26 as, you know, setting where we want to go. National determined contribution, uh, you know, uh, some countries, many countries, luckily, are uh, uh, stating they are going to be climate neutral by, the, by mid-century. The point is that let's imagine that COP26 is where we want to go, while the G20 activity, at least in my perspective, is... Uh, the path along the kind of way we are going to achieve the targets. Uh, because to achieve the targets, we need uh, finance, uh, we need policies. And, you know, uh, most of these things are in the end of, uh, of uh, finance ministries. So the financial track of the G20 decided to uh, step up these activities. There was not, uh, it's, a, it's the first time that we have officially sustainable finance in the G20 agenda as a permanent thing. Uh, yeah, in this slide, just I'm, I'm you know, uh, just uh, showing you what was in the community. It seemed, that, you know, in, G, in the G20, let's be honest, you're, you're not going to achieve much of, the, of, subs, of substance. You have uh, high level uh, messages. But for the first time, you have a reference of climate change. Uh, you have a, a clear reference of how essential it is to have uh, uh, financial markets on board. So public finance is not enough because the challenge is too big. The amount of resources we need for the transition are uh, too much money to be achieved by public finance alone. But at the same time, you know that to orient, pub, to orient uh, financial markets toward these investments, uh, we need to provide the right signal to them. They uh, need the right amount of information, the, the granular information to spot what's uh, green or sustainable and what's not. Uh, and, and you know, and these things is not going to be solved by the G20 this year. So the point, our real achievement was to try to have a discussion on board, to keep the discussion ongoing for the next years, because we have to work on that uh, as a, you know, it's a, it's a long-term achievement, these things of the transition is not something I'm going to achieve in a few years. And, uh, and I think the big point of the, of the presidency was reviving this, uh, what was called before in 2016, the sustainable, the green finance study group, sorry, then became the sustainable finance study group. And uh, uh, under the G20 presidency, it became the sustainable finance working group. That's a big difference because a working group is going to be there to stay in the G20 process. The working group can provide recommendations while the study group could not. Um, and the point of having the sustainable finance working group alive and kicking again was not only you know, having the group on, but we asked, and luckily, we succeed in that uh, having US and China co-chairing this group. US and China emissions are 40, more than 40% actually of global emissions. So we have two, two big players. We have, to, uh, you know, uh, if you want two big players that are in a different side of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, big emitters, uh, uh, with still a growing demand. Uh, so having, you know, a real challenge in transitioning uh, and, you know, a big emitters, but, you know, that where the emission plateau and, and decrease because of the shale gas revolution. So, you know, the situation is that you have both of them on board because the, you know, the challenges are going to be different between uh, uh, emerging countries and industrialized countries. And at the same time, you know that you need global action. So you need some way to find a convergence. Think about carbon pricing, carbon border adjustment, and how these things is related, for example, to the concept of common but differentiated responsibilities. No, I mean, it's obvious that it makes a lot of sense to put the carbon border adjustment as a level playing field, but, you know, emerging countries can say, well, but this is going to conflict somehow with common but differentiated responsibilities. So we have to be aware of that because we have to find a way to overcome these obstacles. 
as a practical point of view, this is the timeline of the activities of the group. And if you concentrate on 2021, you see that this year we are going to expect three deliverables. And you know, some of this stuff was mentioned before by Ambassador, Ambassador Trombetta are part of the agenda of the EU. Uh, let's say that are difficult within the EU, so are going to be even more difficult at the G20 level, again, because of the main difference in capacity building and in expertise and in data uh, uh, availability, for example. But you know, the first point is improving sustainability reporting. We should have more and better information. And the only way to have better information is to have, you know, the emitters and the people that is affecting the environment providing us with that information. So there is this uh, uh, initiative, you know, we know that there are initiatives at the EU level, but you know, this is the initiative at the, uh, at the, at the international level with IOSCO, with IFRS, with the Financial Security Board, trying to scale up this activity and find common way to have a common, a comparable, a comparable uh, uh, reporting. I know that under the G7, there is this discussion of a compulsory disclosure. This is going to be more difficult for the G20, but you know, at least having some common principles governing the disclosure. Focusing, starting focusing on climate. We know that other things are important. For example, this year is all, is, we are going to have also the, the, C, the, the, the COP on biodiversity in Beijing. We know that biodiversity is connected with climate because biodiversity is going to be damaged by climate change. At the same time, many nature-based solutions that improve biodiversity can help uh, tackling climate change. But you know, we have to start from something. Second point is what we call taxonomies in Europe, align investments to sustainability goals. I mean, there is a classification system. This classification system must uh, uh, change, must be focused on activities, on sectors, on assets, uh, must be a green taxonomy, must be a brown taxonomy, so that, that's, that's tricky, no? Uh, but you know, we have again to find some common principles. Uh, China has a long lasting experience of that. EU now is two years that is working on that. Again, it's not easy, but you know, I think we achieved a lot and try to find common way to, uh, to, to, uh, to define this kind of classification. Uh, lastly, the role of multilateral development banks that you know, they should help developing countries in, 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 in uh, to improve their economic growth, but at the same time, put them on a path to be, not to be locked in with fossil fuels, for example. So align, so they're, and increase their capacity, the, the way they increase capacity building in emerging countries to tackle this uh, uh, this point of, of uh, putting them in a path that is coherent with the, uh, with their natural, the national determined contribution and, you know, they, uh, their climate change. So these are the 10 main deliverables. But you know, as I said before, the, the, the really important point is that the group is there. So apart from the deliverable, we are going to have a roadmap. So a long roadmap, a long lasting road, roadmap, three year roadmap that is going to be focused starting again on climate. And you know, and, and the ambition is uh, I, I think Maisha said before, there are many initiatives, try to have some kind of common denominator to coordinate some other many initiatives that are out there. Uh, the group is, for example, every year is going to produce a synthesis report, and I think is, Bitcoin is going to be useful because it's going to, in a sense, a kind of propping up of all the stuff that is out there. Uh, here I'm going to show you just the timeline of the, the Sustainable Finance Working Group initiative. In a few days from now, we are going to have a private sector uh, round private sector roundtable because the thing we would like to know is: is the private sector need something different? along these, these three deliverables and along uh, the roadmap. In fact, we're going to have, uh, as you can see, also a roadmap consultation, just to be sure that we are on the same page. I mean, we don't want to work for ourselves. We want to work to provide the better results in terms, for example, of tools to deal with the transition, you know, portfolio alignments tool or this kind of stuff that is very uh, used today. But, you know, there are so many different approaches, so many different things that, you know, it would be very useful to converge. Then we have some kind of high-level events. I'm underlining here two uh, high-level events. The, the first one is the G20 tax symposium is going to be held on the 9th, 9th of July. The tax symposium is going to focus on environmental taxation, in particular on carbon pricing. And then the G20 Venice Climate Conference is going to be structured in a way that is really similar to the work of sustainable finance working groups. So global policies, what are the policies to achieve the transition? Carbon pricing, low, te uh, low carbon technology support, 
keeping in mind also the need to in, improve in, in universal energy access, for example. So taking into account all these kind of problems and the role of information, disclosure, multilateral development banks, and the role of private market. So in a sense, these kind of events are trying to, again, put together, put all these things together. So it's important to have disclosure. It's important of, the, of, data, uh, of having data gaps. I'm working for a central bank. It's, you know, would be weird a couple of years ago having people of central bank talking about this stuff. But you know, we also know that all start from government policies. So we have also to be blatant and honest and recognize that you know carbon pricing, carbon border adjustment, uh, fossil fuel subsidies removal should be on the agenda because that kind of policies and long-term policies are the one that can provide that kind of, uh, let's say, reduce uncertainty. Financial markets, they do not like uncertainty. So if we want to have what is called an order transition, we really need to have a plan on that. So we need to be clear that we need, for example, uh, having a, a, a price of carbon. You can have a different way to go for that. We know that maybe US is not going to like to have a carbon taxation unless there is a carbon border adjustment. We can discuss that. We can have a regulation, for example, to cap emission. But at the end of the day, financial markets alone are not able to, to, uh, to do the transition. I mean, they, are, they are really important. They can provide resources, they can make the difference and then case scale up the transition, but we need also to discuss on that. So the idea is having focus on all the financial markets need, but at the same time trying to uh, stimulate the financial ministers and the governments to take action. To, if you want to move from the ambition and from the targets in way, very humbling way to start doing few steps toward the transition. That's much of the of, of for, for my presentation, and I hope I'm going to see you at the May event uh, at the at the private sector roundtable on the 17th and 18th.